Okay, so I've been making a whole lot of Minecraft edits, and a bunch of people have been asking me how I actually make them. So, I'm gonna explain in this how I do my velocity, which makes some extremely real, like, some really great shots that are really amazing for your montage. So, first off, drag your clips into the timeline, and actually, before that, on your project, click on this little gear, and set your frame rate to... 60. I'm on the pro version of Resolve, so I have 120. But on the regular version, it's 60. But that should be fine for this tutorial, definitely. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna drag my audio file in, which I'm gonna be using Man in the Bear by Baby Beat No Money. Sounds sick. Alright, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be syncing up the clip. Which, this is the clip that I used in Captain Balsatron's edit. Um, it's the same song, same clip. So, the first thing I'll do is I'm just gonna sync this up until the speed drops. So first what I do is I would like, I would turn off the magnet here temporarily for snapping. So then when you have this on, it will just snap. Like it will just snap. But if you turn this off, it will not snap. Like, snap with the clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look through this audio file and look for the beat drop. I see him. Right there, the clip should start. So I'm gonna bring this clip over here. The man in the I see a man in the mirror that I'm proud. All right, perfect. So we got the first bit done. So now I'm gonna since so it can depend on the song. So I want this to sync with the second bass drop. So I'll find that now. There, that's the second bass drop. So I'm gonna click the magnet again and click this razor tool. So I and then I'll click this. It will split the clip and I'll delete the rest of it. Perfect. So now let me just read this back. Perfect. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm just gonna put my playhead at the very start of the clip. Please do this. All right. So. Now, I'm going to open up the Fusion tab, which is right here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift and Tab. It will bring up this Select Tool thing. So now what you want to do is type in Time Stretcher. Or Time S. And you'll find Time Stretcher. And now, just click on that and press Enter, and you should have the Time Stretcher node in your Fusion. Now, to sync it up, you want to have your playhead at the very start of this clip. And then you should be synced up in Fusion. Now what you want to do is, um, I want this to be at the very start. Okay, there we go. That's the very start. So basically, I would not, sometimes replay mod renders like this weird set, like a second of just a weird camera angle. And then it will just go to the normal camera angle that you made in replay mod. So now what you want to, okay, let me, let me center this. All right. So now what you want to do is you want to set the first. The first keyframe is already set here. So right now there's gonna be no movement because essentially how time structure works is you set one keyframe at the start, which that should be or at zero seconds, but because you know I said again replay mod and all, I set mine to like 2.9 for the source time. So now you wanna go to the very end of this clip on edit tab. Open fusion again, and you should be at the end of the thing. Do not move this time. Now set another keyframe here. And move the source time way until the end of the clip. Way until the end of it. There we go. Now, we should have two keyframes that move the time throughout this much time. So it goes from... Okay. It goes from source time 2.9 all the way to source time 760 in this much time. In like 6 seconds, I think. I think. Let me check again. Yep, around like two, three seconds. All right, perfect. So essentially, I set the keyframes throughout three seconds to go around from this part to this part. That's how time stretcher works. Now let's see how this looks. Just saying, it can take a while to load. So basically, on the timeline, it will not look perfect. It will look choppy on the timeline. But like when you render it. Um, the final project when you export it, it will be it will be clean like it will not have any like lag or whatever. 
All right, so you want to do that very like clean movement, how it like speeds up and then it slows down, then it speeds up again. How you want to ramp the speed for clean velocity. So what you want to do is click this again, open fusion, and click time stretcher and click on spline. That's how we're gonna adjust the velocity of this. So now what you want to do is click on source time. So then you should see the two keyframes here. So now because this is a lot of time, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna set this thing down and I'm gonna set this thing down there so now I can see these two keyframes a bit better but I'm gonna set them even more down so I can see them even more clear all right there we go that should be very good just adjust it to however you like this is my this is how I like it all right so now we want to click this is the very first keyframe these are our two keyframes that we set it's basically a graph editor so you click this thing right here and you'll see this thing another square which is another which is basically a thing you can use to adjust it. So now what I'd like to do is I would move this like this. And I can see we are ramping the speed of it. So now this is set to an ease out. You can def you can look, you can, as you can see, there's a big difference. In the mirror that I'm proud of. There's a big difference in the time. So now what we want to do is we want to ramp it so that it speeds up. as, And then it will go to the base drop and it will come to its max speed and it will end the clip. So how we do that, we click this keyframe here. And then we'll move this thing down like this. And this is the curve that you should really have. This is like the basic curve in most advanced edits these days. So now let's just play this back. Perfect. Alright, let me just do this again. Let me just let this render a bit. So as you can see, it the speed is definitely ramped and it it speeds up here and it slows down and it speeds up perfect that's what we want and it makes a really really nice subtle cinematic so you can play around with this to however you like it so if you want to you can like move this down so then it will be less impactful of a man in the mirror that I'm proud of. at the start a man in the mirror that I'm proud of. like some people for that Durple did that but for this tutorial I prefer it to be more sharp so I'll keep it that a man in the mirror see a man in the mirror ah da Vinci sometimes it's so annoying it doesn't render the timeline that good so that's why I use after effects a man in the mirror that I'm proud of in my See a man in the mirror that I'm proud of. Looks clean. So then you can also add RSMB, which is literally motion blur, but I don't like using it anymore because it, I, don't feel, I don't see it that effective these days. So that's why I use pixel motion blur on AE, on After Effects. But that's how you do the clean velocity. Now I'm going to switch over to AE to show you how you can do this. All right, so new composition. Um... Let's set the duration to around 2 minutes and 36 seconds. That should be good for this song specifically. Here it is, and again, just like how I did it in Resolve, I'm going to sync it up to the song. And depending on your computer, you can set the quality of the preview to quarter, third, half. Full only if you want to see like how it is. I would not recommend using full in the, t in the, in the, um, in the timeline preview it will re it will render in full like when you export it but you want to keep the preview at like third or quarter so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to sync up the song i'm going to sync up the cinematic to the song i see a man in the mirror that i'm proud of there there we go in s so this time instead of cutting it what we do is we s turn on time remapping so what you want to do is right click this clip and turn on time remapping. So right here you see two keyframes. It's the same thing as time treasure. So, but this time you want to move the last keyframe over here to this tag, and then press Control Shift D, so you can move out this move out this unnecessary bit of keyframe of just nothing actually. And there we go. Delete it. The man in the mirror that, mirror that I'm proud of. Proud of it, that I'm proud of it. I see a man in okay that should be perfectly synced so now we have our sourced points done um now what you want to do is you want to drag and I mean, drag 
um, hold your mouse on these um, two keyframes, and then once these are both selected, press F9. And then it should put like a pre-curve, but this pre-curve is not that good. We want to do that speed ramping, just like how we did it on Resolve. So what you want to do is you want to click the graph editor right here. And this is the current um, uh, velocity that's set to. And I don't like this. We want to make it um, better, just like how we did on Resolve. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, this time, you click this line. And then you click this yellow point over here and then move it up like this. Okay, now so we have our first keyframe done. That's curved. And we want to do it for the second keyframe like this. And there and then just play around with it. Let's see. I think this should be good. See a man in the mirror that I'm but I'm proud of. See a man in the mirror that I'm pr I'm proud of. That I'm proud of. I want to be more sharp. Wait, I forgot to fix this bit over here. Okay, now it's fixed. I want this thing to be more sharp at the very end. So I'm gonna set the man in the mirror that I'm proud of. I see a man in your man in the mirror that I'm proud of. Mirror that I'm proud of. Perfect. Alright. So if you don't know, there's a thing called DOF or depth of field that you can add, which you can basically like blur the sky and all. So I'll show you the shader. I'll have a link to it. And basically, everything like blocks, player, everything is black, and then the sky is white. So then you can like blur the sky and other stuff. Like I prefer to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna if you wanna if you wanna do that, you have to put the timing and all the velocity in the DOF as well. Or else, what's gonna happen is that it's you're gonna have two completely different movements. So then it's not gonna look good at all like it's just gonna be messed up so what you want to do is you want to copy these two keyframes mm. you want to copy these two keyframes enable time remapping on the DOF clip so stay at the very first keyframe the very first one paste those keyframes that you just set and then click the button here to go to the last keyframe here and do control shift D and delete that sec that clip that just was up there now what you want to do is the normal the normal clip you want to copy and paste that. Now on track mat and if you want to enable if you want to find track mat you have to click this button right here to, to see that. And then click this button here and set it to luma inverted mat. Now it should look normal but this time you actually have a uh, a clip where you can actually set stuff to the sky. So then we're gonna add Gaussian blur. And I like this, and you can set it to around like 15, six, like 15, 18, but I like to put that up to like 20. There we go. Now we have a blurred sky. And if you don't have um, Red Dry and Trepa code, um, it's fine. You don't have to add this. But I like to add this thing called Shine to the sky. And because this sky is like a bit weird, I'm gonna set it to around like 50, and that should be good. Alright, it's rendered. Perfect. Alright, so now what else what 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 else do I do? So I like to add motion blur. Um so what I do is I select these three two clips, I turn on frame blending. Then I turn on motion blur. And if you want to see the motion blur and frame blend thing to come up, you have to click this button right here. So then after that, I pre-compose this. And I'll call this um, starting clip. Well, I'll just call this clip one. I like to keep it organized, clip one. And then what I'll do is I'll add um, pixel motion blur. And it's essentially R some B, but just way better. So it will actually make your computer lag a bit when rendering. And I'm also recording at high quality, so it will lag a bit more. So I like to set the shuttle samples to around like like um, 19. The shutter angle to around 233. And vector detail to... Um, 
23. And then it should make a nice blur, a nice motion blur effect. And now, here is the final result. Turned out really great. And yeah. Let me know if you like this tutorial or not. I'll make a few more later. So you can, you can make montages as well. And yeah. Baby in a car, well, you better stand clear. Only a life of some depressed. I'm the man in the mirror. I'm here for long, I claim my residence. I'm the man in the mirror. My numbers growing ain't in evidence. I'm the man in the mirror. I'm finally glad I set some precedent.